Hey, what's up everyone? This is John with Web Dev for you and welcome to today's video tutorial. Uh, today is a follow-up of the, the previous video where I showcase how to build uh, this website header in Webflow. So if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend watching that first. Uh, in today's video tutorial, uh, I'm just gonna cover a few things that, um, that I felt like I missed in the last video. And we're also going to create uh, this animation here with this logo animating. We're going to create it in After Effects and then we're going to place it into Webflow using uh, Body Movement and Lottie. Alright, so if you haven't watched that video, um, I highly recommend watching that first. Um, I'll leave a link to that video in the description area below. So the first thing I'll cover really quick is a few things that um, I think might make it easier as you're building if you decide to rebuild this or you're following along with the tutorial. Um, there's a few things that weren't super intuitive as I was working with it. Uh, the first one is here, the slider on the right. We can see that there's not a lot of real estate to work with that. Um, I kind of used a little workaround where I made the slider. Um, I set a specific width to the slider. Um, there's I think a, a better way to do that, um, or to, to make the slider more visible. Um, what you can do is select the content wrapper and you can temporarily remove the padding. So I'm holding, holding down alt with the content wrapper selected and I'm setting it to 0%. So now I can see the slider and I can work with it uh, a bit better. Um, so here we can see that I added the lightbox link here in the slider. I set it to a position of absolute and I placed it in the bottom right. Um, so yeah, just by removing the padding, you can work with the different elements in the designer a bit easier. If we preview, we can see it doesn't look great um, because the content is now all the way to the left. But after you're done editing, you can just re-add the padding. Um, there's also another way uh, to, to center this text um, that I think might be a bit better as well. Um, so I'll just remove the padding um, so we don't have any padding there. And then um, within the content wrapper, I'll add another div block. So I'll hold down Command K to add a div block. I'll say div, and I'll just place this div below the content wrapper, and I'll place all the content inside of this div, div block, okay? So all the content just goes inside of here. I'm just click holding and dragging to the right to place it within this new div block. Now, if I preview, Everything is to the left, but what I can do is select the content wrapper and set the display setting to align center rather than align start. So now if I preview, the content is in the center and everything is in the center. So there's enough white space where I like it. And if I wanted to move it even further to the right, I could just add um, some margin to this new div block. So I could call this div block like a uh, text wrapper. And yeah, I could just add some margin to move it a bit more to the right. And that would look good. So depending on the design or what you're going for, um, either way could work. Uh, but I find, you know, setting the content in the center works really well. And yeah, at times you might have to set a specific width and height to, to the content. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't fully extend uh, to the width of the content wrapper. So for this text wrapper, yeah, I could set it a specific width and height. So I could set a specific width of 500 or I could do something like 400 and it would just change the width and things like that. So yeah, that's just an, another technique. Uh, there are different ways to approach a design. Uh, it all depends on what you're going for, but I did want to cover that um, just as another option, uh, as a yeah another technique within Webflow. Also by using the Flexbox setting within the content wrapper, we noticed that the slider doesn't get smaller and we can continue to work with it within Webflow. Um, when we add padding, it does it does move um, the different grid cells. Um, it makes them bigger or smaller. So just one thing to note, um, and these are all things that you kind of pick up on as you, you work with Webflow. Uh, the other thing that I'll cover really quick is this heading here. So as I'm working with it, we can see that it's not super easy to work with because all the text is on top of each other. So it doesn't make it easy to edit the text. So one thing you can do is you can select the, the slide three heading. You can go into background and here I'll just change the background color to white. 
So now I can see it and I can work with it. I can edit the text. And if I want it, if I want to edit the slide two heading, I can just go into the display setting, set it to none and do the same for the slide two heading, give it a background color of white. And now I can edit it. And then if I want to edit the slide one heading, I can set the display setting of the slide two heading to none. And now I can edit the text. All right, so yeah, it's just, you know, setting a background color and then working with the different elements. And then after I'm done editing all the text, I can go back into the slide two heading, set the display setting to block, then go back into the background, hold down alt and click on color to remove that background color. Um, if I were to leave the background color, um, and let me go back into here. Yeah, let me select the slide three heading and yeah, set the display setting to block. If I were to, to leave the background color, we notice that behind this text, we don't see this textured background. Um, I do want this background to be visible behind the text. So that's why we set the color to transparent. So yeah, I'll just go back into the slide three heading and hold down alt and set the color to transparent. And yeah, the same for the slide two heading. Um, hold down alt, click on color to remove that background um, heading or the back the background color. All right, so now if we preview, um, we can see the background behind the text. Um, so that's just a technique so that as you're working with uh, this text, you can see it uh, because we are overlaying text on top of each other and it's not always easy to, to see that text. All right, so just wanted to cover uh, a few of those things, you know, working with the padding. If you work with padding, uh, within grid, it does it does move um, other grid cells. Um, it makes them smaller, so it doesn't always make it easy to just to design within Webflow. All right, so the next thing I'm going to cover is creating this intro animation within After Effects. So for this, uh, I'm just going to move a bit quick through it. If you need to reference everything that I'm covering, there is an amazing um, article by Tom Beckers from FlowBase.co where he covers everything I'm, I'm about to cover. He covers it in an article with different steps. Uh, so I'll leave a link to that in the description area below. So great, so I'll just jump into After Effects. So I have it right here. Uh, for this, it's not gonna be like an in-depth After Effects tutorial, so I'm just gonna move a bit quick through it. Uh, for the composition, I'm gonna set it to 400 by 400, click OK. I'm gonna add some text. So add some text, I'm gonna say conserve. And I'm going to align this text in the center of the composition. Okay, I'm going to double click, right click, create shapes from text. So it creates an outline uh, to the text. So each letter becomes a shape. I'll open up the, the text outline. Uh, so click on content. Contents, I'm going to add a modifier. I'm going to say trim paths. And this allows me to kind of draw the path. So we just have this animation. So here I'm working with the, the end option and that looks good. So I'm gonna add a keyframe at the beginning. So I'm, I'm gonna click on the end keyframe um, and I'm gonna set it to zero. And then I'm gonna go to one second and set the end keyframe back to 100. So all this does is it just draws out these letters. Um, they do have a fill. So it's just drawing them out like that. All right, um, I only need it to be one second. So I'll just drag the, the timer here to one second. And just like that, we have this little animation. Um, it's fairly simple. I'm not going to go too in depth, um, but you can do a lot of great things in After Effects and you can import them into Webflow. Okay, so there we have the animation. So now I'm going to use Body Move In um, to export this After Effects uh, animation as a .json file, which I can later bring uh, into Webflow. So to do that, I'm going to go to Window, go to Extensions, and I have this Body Move In extension. If you don't have this, you can click on Find Extensions on Exchange, and it'll open up the this option here within the Creative Cloud, and you can just install the Body Move In extension to to use it. All right, and it will install into After Effects. You might have to restart After Effects to use it, but um, that's all you have to do: find extensions and install Body Move In. So I'll go to Extensions, click on Body Move In. And here I have the composition. I want to select it here where it says selected. Then I want to uh, select the destination folder and I'll select this After Effects folder. Um, I'll kind of call it conserve logo here, click save, and I'll just replace it. And then I'll click on render. 
So it renders this composition. I'll click done and then I'll go to that folder. Okay, so here I have the file. It's in this After Effects folder. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll go to gist, gist.github.com. Um, you might have to create a new account, but here you can create a, a gist and then you can reference it uh, within the the code and within the code that's added to Webflow. So I want to, um, let me minimize this here. I can go ahead and open the finder and just click, hold and drag this .json file to create the gist. And I'll click on create secret gist. And then I'll click on raw. And then this, here's the code that it generates um, or the code, the JSON file. And I wanna copy this URL here. Um, so now that I have the, the, uh, the JSON file, I can add the code that's needed into, into the project. So I'll go back to the animal conservation UI and I'm just gonna add a few elements here. So I'm um, gonna open, let me pin, yeah, let me uh, make this a bit larger. Um, good, so we have it pinned. So I'll select the body. I'm gonna add a new div block and I'm gonna call this uh, intro wrapper and I'm gonna set the position to fixed and set it to absolute and the background color, I'm gonna set it to this green there. And I'm gonna set the Z index to something really high like 99. So it goes in front of everything else. I'm gonna set the display setting to flex, uh, justify center and align center. So anything I place within the intro wrapper is in the center. I'm gonna go ahead and add another div block. And this is gonna be the logo animation wrapper. And I'm going to give it a specific width and height. So I'm going to say 300 pixels by 300 pixels. I'm going to add another div block inside the logo animation wrapper. And I'm going to call this uh, logo animation. I'm going to set the position to absolute and full. And let me make sure the logo animation wrapper is set to a position of relative so that the logo animation is relative to that wrapper. So the the JSON file is gonna reference this div block, the logo animation, and we just added it within a wrapper so that we could set a specific width and height. Um, so yeah, we're gonna use this this class name, logo animation. Um, so now I can reference the um, the Tom Becker's article here on flowbase.co, and the code we need is this Lottie script. So here I'll hit Command C to copy the script. Um, I'll go into the project, open the page, open the home page go down to the before the body tag and just paste that in there, click save. And then we wanna reference another piece of code, which is right here, hit command C, and then go back into the project um, right after this script tag, hit enter, and then command V to paste. And then here we want to reference the class name. So we know the class name for that animation, we want it to be, um, logo dash animation. Um, I don't want it to loop for the loop. I'll say false. I do want it to autoplay. And here are the path. This is the URL from the gist that we created. So we just want to go in here and copy this URL, go back into Webflow. And for the path, just paste that URL in between the quotes. And that's it. So again, the most important things are the class name for the div block that you want to place the animation in, and then the path here from the gist. Um, so yeah, so if you don't have a gist account, um, you can just go to gist.github.com, create an account, then you can create a new gist and drag and drop the JSON file from uh, body moving into here and it creates the, the name and then you can create the secret gist and copy the URL. All right, so we have everything. We have that code, class name and the URL for the JSON file. So now I'll click save and I'll publish, publish to selected domains and I'll preview. So it animates and good. So the last thing we need to do is move up this entire panel after the animation finishes. So I'll go into interactions on page load. I'll add a new page load animation. So I'll click page load. When page starts loading, we're going to start an animation and let me delete this here. I'm going to add a new animation and I'm gonna call it logo page load. Okay, I'll select the intro wrapper. I'll say move. And on the Y axis, I'll move it negative 
give it an easing of ease out quad and 0.5 seconds is okay. And I'll add a delay of one second so that the animation has time to complete and then the, the intro wrapper moves up. Um, and that's it. So if I preview one second and then it moves up, perfect. So I'll publish, publish two selected domains, preview, animates and then goes up. So that's a bit quick. So let's do, let's add a delay of uh, two seconds and let's see how that looks. Preview, it animates and then animates up. And that's it. Um, you could work with the easing of the panel moving up. Um, I could make it a bit quicker as well. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to it. So now, now I'll preview and animate and then it moves up. All right, and then I can go through and uh, play the, uh, or uh, work with the website or kind of view the website here. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, I know I moved a bit quick. There was a lot of things I wanted to cover in this tutorial, so I didn't want to make it too long. But everything I covered as far as After Effects um, can be found here in this article. I'll leave a link in the, in the description area below. Uh, there's also a few other resources in the description area below. Um, there's a, a link to the Learn UI design course, which I highly recommend. Let me just go here to the UI. Uh, there's the Learn UI design. Um, there's Envato Elements, where you can download really amazing assets. The, the assets for this uh, header were from Envato Elements, so like the images and the background. Um, and there's links to webdevforyou.com as well, uh, where you can check out daily interactions, uh, premium content, and templates. Uh, so that's it for this follow-up. It's a fairly long follow-up, but there's just certain things that um, sometimes when you're building, you're, you, you think, oh, I could have done this better. And so I just wanted to showcase a few of those things in this tutorial and also how to work with After Effects and Body Movin. Um, yeah, this wasn't an in-depth After Effects tutorial, but um, just kind of quick to quickly showcase how to export from After Effects and add into Webflow. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, and yeah, and if you loved it, you can subscribe and follow my content that, um, that I release on my YouTube channel. So thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial.